And now, it's time for wrestling's hottest game show, The 30. Here's your host, referee ESO. Hey, thank you for that intro, Joe, and welcome to the wrestling's hottest game show, Duh 30, where every week I challenge this elite group of wrestling experts with questions based on the current wrestling scene. They are awarded points based on their answers, and the one with the most points at the end of the day is crowned Duh 30 world champion. Now let's introduce this panel. To my right, we have the self-proclaimed smartest man in the room. He is Dan Sebastiano. What's up, Dan? Hey, Bruce, looking forward to it. I know uh, we, we took a week off due to some technical difficulties, so hopefully you've forgotten all the pity points you gave Joe <laughs> to, before, and I'll actually barely reclaim my title. Right. No one's getting the title. No one's getting the title tonight. And next, we have the honor of having the president of Thursday night, Mr. Phil DeCessory. Phil. You know, guys, <laughs> uh -oh. it's so funny. Strange things have been happening to me since I moved up north. Oh, Jesus. Like, all of a sudden, I, I speak in a monotone, and you can't see me. Oh, my God. What I might be on? coming like that guy. Up. No, wait a minute. No, maybe I've, see, maybe I've seen itis, and you can't see me. Or Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Jesus. My, my, my finger was hey. on my camera. Oh, hey, oh, what's up, guys? Oh, there you are. My oh, God. Get talk, he's going to get that technology out of the way. Do not touch the camera. Plus, plus five <laughs> points for the little Jimmy reference. <laughs> <laughs> little Jimmy. All right. Next, we have a man who needs no introduction. He is the poet laureate of the 30. He's also known as the player. He is Benny Scala. What's up, Benny? Yes, sir. I am the player, the Thursday Night Delight, and welcome to another episode of Pros at the Player. This one's going to be a little bit sad because today actually marks the uh, six-year anniversary of the passing of the best ever, in my opinion, uh, Bruno San Martino wow. died uh, April 18th, um, 2018. So this is dedicated to Bruno. So here we go. Six years ago, my entire world was shaken. Bruno San Martino, my hero, suddenly was taken. This man was a role model to a million of us folk. He was a man of humble roots and lived the word he spoke. So Bruno, until we meet again, I'd like to say to you, Thank you, sir, for being you and always staying true. Wow, good job. Nice good job. job. Thank you. Very nice. nice. Ben, I think you deserve at least four points for that one. I'll take it. I'll Already take four it. points up. What the hell is going on here? Jesus. I'm All telling right. you. Listen, we can hear him down in that bottom left-hand corner. There's another guy. He doesn't need an introduction. A man who's never at a loss for words. That's what a day, Joe Lowry. What's up, Joe? What a day. The belt is with me, folks. I am the 30 champion, and it's not going anywhere. Hey, by the way, did you know that if you borrow money from a pessimist, they'll never expect it back? Love that one, huh, folks? <laughs> let's play Let's play. Let's play the 30, I folks. Know, right. Should I take the 30 for that, for that bad pun there? <laughs> and by the way, yesterday marked six years, ironically, the passing of China. Yeah. Oh, okay. Tony Lawrence. Yeah, right. That's kind of weird. That was yesterday. I had that on my Facebook page. Yeah, we, I, I posted on the uh, on our page too. Yesterday would have been Roddy Piper's seventieth birthday. I mean, that's uh, right. A lot of things in the year. I mean, after this eclipse, everything's gone wacky. I'm telling you. Yeah, you, you know the old universe. saying, right? A April showers and and bridge collapses and eclipses bring May yeah. flowers. Isn't that how that works? <laughs> yeah. What do May flowers bring? Pilgrim. Yeah. Hey, what a boom, huh? You got to love it. No points for that, Bruce? No points for that? Come on. Look at that. All look right, at that listen, title. Listen, oh. you guys know the rules of this. Lying, cheating, foreign cool. objects, and all other distractions are allowed and encouraged. Points are given for amusing comments, trash talking, and bribery via Venmo, PayPal, and uh, Cash App. And credit cards are accepted, but there is a 10% service fee, which uh, somebody it. challenged me and told me I couldn't, ch I couldn't charge that. My God. God. If you switch to Zell, Bruce, I'm interested in some bribery, no. okay? Because I think I'll Zell is not the, traceable. I'll send you the info later, Phil. Send, send the Thanks, money man. to friends and family. There's no service charge. That's right, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, friends and family. <laughs> All right, guys. Are you ready for this first question? Let's no, do it. Do it. Never ready. All right. Sock it to me. As we discussed a couple weeks ago, CM Punk made some disparaging remarks towards Tony Khan, AEW, and the incident that led to him leaving the company. In response, Tony promised and did release the footage of the incident of that night. 
most seem to think it was a dud for Khan. What do you guys think? Is this is there any long term damage to AEW or Punk? Should stuff like this be made public, or should stuff like this just be you know, kept behind the scenes? So let's see, Dan. It looks like you're going to be first up on the thirty today. Are you ready, sir? Absolutely. All right. Are you ready? Let's go. Are you All right. Well, to I'll start with a simple answer. Is there any good for AEW to come out of this? Absolutely not. This was a dumb, horrible decision for several reasons. One. You, you had just come off two weeks of the lowest rated AWs in the better part of four years, the lowest rated Dynamite, low, the week before, oh. lowest rated uh, key demo ever. And now you you have a rating. You pop over 800,000. CM Punk hasn't wrestled that cat. over Jesus. a year and a half, and he is still the biggest draw they have. Also, uh, oh. bonus points for the cat, by the way. I want my cat bonus points. The, cat uh, points. <laughs> you know, points for multitasking. You know, Tony oh, Khan fired CM Punk because he felt like his life was threatened. This video showed that not only was his life not threatened, but every single thing CM Punk said in his podcast interview happened to the letter. You can overlap it and listen to his words and narrate the video until AEW takes it down because for some reason they're now scared to share the video. And it's just, you know, it was an absolute waste. It was dumb. You have empty buildings. You have low ticket sales. You have the worst ratings you've had in years. And you're focused. Focus is going to be the bit one of the biggest stars in the other company, and now Kenny Omega goes on his live stream and talks about how he didn't want he he didn't say it directly, but he was very much I hate this. It was a stupid idea, and no one asked me. And now, what are they going to build the feud between? Uh, Omega comes back against Okada around CM Punk. How much more money are they going to try and milk from a guy that walked out of your company because it's run by a clown? Wow! Nice job. Wow! What a first round, Dan. 15 points. Wow, wow look at that. For the, you know what? Two bonus points for the cat. He literally yeah. well, that a a beat. He moved the cat around, kept going. And so now we got Dan, animals. Go. What, what the hell is this? So we need animals now to, to win eight points? <laughs> My God. I have 11 cats, but yeah. I don't bring you know them. You know what? There is, there is nothing. There is nothing stronger in this world than the bond between a man and his stray. You know uh. that. Yeah, and I got 11 of them. If they come in here, they're going to eat everything. I won't be on TV, so. <laughs> so let's see. Hey, Who's up hey, next quick, on the third? Quick, quick shout out. Joe Myers, five bucks donation. All right. Thank you, hey, Joe. Hey, Joe, Joe Meyer. On the 30. It looks thank like the boss, you. the boss is in the house, too, so we got to behave a little oh, bit. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, no, no busy. Keep it funny, guys. Right uh, wrestling stuff. Right? Wrestling stuff. Wrestling stuff. Busy. <laughs> wrestling stuff. <laughs> All right. Phil. Phil, oh. you're going to be next on the 30. Are you ready? Give it to me, baby. Let's Are go. You ready? All right. You know, I don't see how this thing could have lived up to the hype because there was just so much hype, you know, and and, and primarily on the side of AEW, I think, trying to build this thing up. And, and in some other wrestling circles, it really would have helped if we had some audio with this, okay? Because we really, I mean, this is like going back to the days before talkies, you know, and and the Keystone Cops, I just couldn't follow what was going on. I mean, it was a quick snippet, you know? It was a shove and a front face lock. I didn't see Tony Khan at all in the picture either. Um, I mean, what does it prove? That CM Punk can be a challenge to to deal with? I think, I think we already know that, right? You know? So, I don't know. I think one thing that it might help to do has been discussed a little bit, because I think C um, Tony Khan was asked about the potential of working with WWE in the future. And he did mention that at least on his side, if I think conditions were right, that that would be a possibility. You know, there's going to be this, I, the bigger story really is this war between companies, which really is fairly one-sided now, I have to admit. I mean, I think AEW is putting up a pretty valiant struggle so far and, and it is a fight. And I, I think ultimately we're far from the conclusion, but what can you say about WWE? I mean, Unbelievable fan response, unbelievable attendance. I mean, I'm excited for the product too, but yet I still find myself tuning into AEW. I, I certainly tuned in and they got a 30% ratings bump from this. So, I mean, there was some good in it there too. Ultimately, what did it do? Maybe it was a nothing burger. Maybe it'll help this advance the story that they're trying to craft. I think time will tell, but um, I tuned in and a lot of people did too. And if we can kind of blur the lines as has been done, I think we're going to improve the product in general. Overtime. And I'm out of time. He yeah, gets overtime. <laughs> Sorry. He didn't get any score beyond that. I was, I was watching him. <laughs> oh, you're such a brutal man. Brutal. Brutal. So, oh. All right. Well, listen, we got uh, the players up next on the 30. Player, are you ready for this? I'm ready. All right. Let's go. Are you ready? 
Well, first of all, there is no truth to the rumor that Tony Khan's head looks the, the way it does from being <laughs> stuck between Aunt Esther's legs. Aunt Esther. No, now, don't forget, Aunt Esther's <laughs> Watch the Joe, you broke that. Fame. Joe broke that on, on, on Wrestling Remembered, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. Aunt Esther's all elite. All so, elite. Uh, the Wanda. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, she's another marvelous talent that was signed and buried in Tony Khan's toy box. She said box. So <laughs> your response your response to WWE's record-shattering WrestleMania record is to post a video of the backstage altercation from Wembley at la last year. You guys remember that movie, uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High? Love the it, team. baby. Remember Absolutely. Yeah. Mr. Han, when he's Mr. handing out Han. the test papers. What did he say? What are you people? On dope? <laughs> you, know, you lost your greatest star, your greatest needle mover, re revenue producer. And why? Because he tried to pr provide the leadership that you, Tony Khan, are incapable of. What do you think would have happened if that no-talent jackass Perry tried that during the Attitude Era, uh, during a, a PLE? The biggest fight that would have happened would have been backstage over who was going to blast his little ass until next week. And uh, so I say, Tony Khan, that this is a huge case of sour grapes, except that would require you having grapes in the first place. Oh, nice. nice job, Benny. 17. Oh, he had four points. That I had four. <laughs> Mother of God. I got to tell you. Joe's getting bent out of shape here. <laughs> you, 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 gotta, you gotta love the Fast Times rep. Phoebe Cates, come on. Play the video. The Pretty red bikini? Good. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Jennifer Jason Lee. Oh, boy. Right. Was that Judge Reinhold too? Yeah. Who was that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Got Brad Hamilton. So yeah. Yes. You're what do you got? On the third. Are you ready? Uh, I'm ready, baby. I'm Let's always go. ready. Let's go. All right. Well, this is going to come straight from my rant that I displayed the other day on Monty and the Farrow. You can check the video. Out. I will read this verbatim. This is perfect timing anyways. So listen, while most wrestling fans were nursing their WrestleMania hangovers, AEW decided to launch a marketing scheme similar to that of a timeshare. AEW's resident EVPs, the Young Bucks, announced they were going to show the world what I really happened that. backstage at the All In Pay Per View in London between CM Punk and Jack Perry. I was like, wait, what? This is too good to be true because just days earlier, CM Punk on a podcast informed the world what had happened that, that night. Did I miss a payment on my timeshare? Eight months later, and we now get a video of the altercation. After watching the video, I found myself comparing the stunt to that of a timeshare contract. They overpromised and underdelivered. And what we can now call this video nothing more than a hype package for an upcoming pay per view match. Um, this video does absolutely nothing for AEW. Actually, it will hurt AEW in the long run. While the video made the rounds on the internet, it will surely end up on the receiving end of some sort of video montage on not how to run a wrestling company. Seems that Tony Khan, if you watch the video, was more worried about his video monitor than the health and welfare of his employees. And just like those fees you incur with that timeshare contract, that can take forever to get out of. Now may be the time for Tony Khan to cut his losses and void that timeshare contract and perhaps the contract of the EBPs. Thank you very much. I have the title right here. Nice. Shine it up, Joe. Right. Shine 13 it up. Points. Okay. Are you okay. kidding me? If there was 13. some more original, if it were more original, I mean, if you would have switched it up just a little bit, but <laughs> I heard that up. the other day because I listened to it. And, and, I and let's it. let's right. not let's not forget that you know all hey, this Joe, video yeah. also showed that Punk completely chumped out Jack Perry. So yeah. if they ever bring him back, now he's, all I'm going to think about is him getting his ass kicked backstage. CM Punk told the truth. He said there were no punches. I choked the guy in some more. Yeah, and you can I see him a little bit. bit. When, when he turns the because uh, Tony Khan's around that the corner of that wall like gorilla, you can yeah. see CM Punk yelling like "You're a fucking clown. This is a joke. Yeah. I quit." Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, exactly we, to the letter, exactly what he said was going to ha happen happened. How come there was no sound on it? And, and another thing I was worried about: this may be a work because where's the timestamps on the video? If this is this looks like security footage that they got from uh, Wembley right. Stadium backstage. So we're looking at this video. There's no sound. You There's know, no what? time. That's wiretapping if they I, would, though. I think that would be good. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think, I mean, honestly, I think it's real. And and I oh, think yeah. it's, I, I think it's, it's, 
like I said, I can't stress how stupid it is. But now that you've proven that CM Punk was telling the truth, yeah. now, I now believe more than I did before every other thing he said in that interview, oh, yeah. Oh, including yeah. when he said, I signed the NDAs, not for anything I did. So now I know that Brawl Out wasn't his right. fault either. Yeah. It just seems like a work now. It seems like they're playing it as a work. You think this and- gives uh, gives a lot more credibility to uh, to CM Punk as a person? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 100%. And, and 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 it it takes away more what what little they if they had any. It, I the the young bucks are a joke now. Even Dave Meltzer yeah. said it was a bad idea. <laughs> if Dave Meltzer can't ass kiss yeah. AEW, then you know they screwed up. Yeah. I don't I don't like the fact the timing of all this. What if CM Punk wasn't on that podcast and nothing happened? If it wasn't WrestleMania weekend, do you think the Young Bucks would actually put this video out? I don't think so. The no, timing, absolutely not. Eight months later, I, I think on. they eight had hey, they later. had this in their back pocket in case he ever said anything about oh, it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, they were ready to pull this out no matter what. But I just worry about the video itself because no timestamp, no right. sound. If it's real security footage, play the whole thing. Let us hear what happened. I don't yeah. care with a bunch of yelling and screaming. Let's hear it. Somebody must have said something. I mean, I, we you know. Jack Perry obviously enticed uh, CM Punk to grab him, and you know CM Punk just didn't randomly do it. Right. Perry probably. Uh, I want to hear what he said. I want to hear it. Where's that? Where's that? You know, I'd like to see that part of it. If Are you saying not- that Jack Perry talks like Tarzan but fights like Jane? <laughs> Good one. There you go. And he's not a cheetah, right? <laughs> yeah, who played the original Tarzan? Who was that? Johnny 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 Weissmiller. Give us some points, Bruce, because I think we just answered the next question too. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> so, hey guys, listen. Why don't we take a quick commercial break, and then when we come why back, we? we're going to start talking about uh, something I wanted to talk about last week: uh, WrestleMania 40. We'll be mm-hmm. right back. All right. And APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence. Collision Specialists. 631 631- Two six one six four two zero. That's six three one two six one six four two zero. Auto Excellence. Jimmy, I gotta take a dump. What? No, I mean I need a dumpster. <sighs> well, for all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, six three one nine hundred dump. Elm Logistics, for all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics, pride, performance, and partnerships. Hey everybody, welcome back to the 30 Wrestling's Hottest Game Show. Thanks for joining us. We got the El Presidente, we got the player, we got the smartest guy in the room, the Dan. And of course, we have the Crooked Referee ESO in the house. But hey, real okay. quickly, let's take a look at that chat. We got a lot of people uh, watching tonight. Uh, shout out, obviously, Joe Myers with a donation. Thank you very much, Joe. We have Jason in the house. Loose Love Jason. Jason. Thanks for joining us. I did see Angela in there too. RJ Hudson, Angelia, Angelia, and Steve great song Parker. by Richard Marx, by the way. Uh, everybody's here. Loose RJ. I think I already mentioned those guys. Everyone having a good time in the chat. Thank you so much for joining always a us. good time. Always a good time. And uh, hey, by the way, when you see the video, why don't you share this? Throw it on your social media. Let everybody know that the thirty is the hottest wrestling game show going on right now. All right, folks, back to you, ESO. All right. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. And yeah, welcome back, guys. Hey, uh, next we're going to talk. I had this question ready for last week, but unfortunately, with our technical difficulties, we couldn't get it off. And uh, but we, we keep hearing that the uh, we just had the greatest WrestleMania of all time with this WrestleMania 40 Ooh. that just passed. Oh, back it this, up a little this bit. This is getting reiterated and reiterated over and over on the air. Where would you rank this year's WrestleMania? Was it the greatest of all time? If so, why? If not, which one was and why? And uh, Champ, it looks like you're going to be first on the 30. 
Wow. Wow. So we're going, so we're going back two weeks now. All right. WrestleMania 30, of course, you know, I did some post shows for somebody else, but I got to tell you, rest, this WrestleMania, no, it's, it's a top 10, if anything. Uh, the first night was very blah. I got to tell you, uh, I don't even know why they put Becky Lynch out there. She had the flu, 100 to 102 degree temperature. You could see the IV marks in her hand. She barely made it through that match. Rhea Ripley actually helped her. And that kind of kicked off the whole night, really. I think Saturday night, they kind of, um, it was very slow. It was just, you know, it was a lot of hype. I think I saw Michael Cole announce the weather forecast about 50 times because I think they started at like 45 degrees and it was down to 39 by the time the, the main event kicked off. But yeah, everything was expected on there. Second night, total opposite. It was a great card all around. The Drew McIntyre, CM Punk, that was exciting. And of course, Cody Rhodes finishing the story and the drama surrounding all that. Where would I rank that? Definitely a top 10, uh, 8, 9, 10, probably. My favorite WrestleMania, of course, is the original WrestleMania. We did this on Wrestling Remembered that week. And I got to tell you, you know, where would we be without that first WrestleMania? Cindy Lauper, the rock and roll, uh, rock and wrestling connection. You had Liberace, Billy Martin, everybody in there. The stars galore. The press was on everything. They were on Saturday Night Live the night before Hulk Hogan and Mr. G. So I got to rank uh, that first WrestleMania one was my favorite. And without that, there'd be no other WrestleMania. So you got it. Yeah, the nice champ job, is here. The champ is here. I love this belt, by the way. It's my what a day entertainment belt. You gotta love it. There it is. <laughs> look at that was a gift. Baby Kings gave me that. See, look at that. Isn't that nice? Love it. Love it. The king, baby. The king. Where did I get 26? Oh, that ain't too bad. That ain't yeah, too 30, bad. You're averaging 13. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Mr. President, looks like you're Yo. 30. You are Yo diggity. Yo, President. Yo diggity. All right. Uh let's okay. let's do this. First of all, I, I, for myself, and again, having been alive for all these WrestleManias, um, which is kind of a prerequisite for judging them, uh, WrestleMania three for my money was was likely the best. And uh, first of all, it was it was the irresistible force meeting the unmovable object. Okay, yeah, and there's force, being right. such a mark for uh, Andre anyway, and actually for Hogan too. So I was kind of split, and I didn't want to see Andre lose for quote unquote, the first time. But uh, yeah, it was it was an amazing time. And again, this is pre home pay-per-view. OK, so we were watching it on giant screens in the in this case, the uh, the Worcester Centrum, which is now the DCU right. Center. So that was a that was a, a, an amazing thing. And, and to watch amongst, you know, 12,000 other people was great. Steamboat and Savage, a classic, a clinic. Unbelievable. We didn't know how rehearsed it was back then, but it was really it was for the time amazing, and and you could do that match today, and it would be incredible. Um, <laughs> as far as the most recent, pardon me, WrestleMania, you know, a couple of disappointments. I wasn't keen on Sami Zayn beating uh, Gunther, certainly, uh, and I wasn't keen on um, on Damian Priest winning. I was keen on Damian Priest, but what I noticed is both he and Sami, uh, in pay per views of the past year, lost to Bad Bunny. And to uh, Johnny Knoxville, respectively. Yeah. So I kind of wonder what that does to the title and the status. And I almost feel like they were rewarded for, we're for supposed doing to, the job. To forget about that. That's why we're. But you know, but it. I found that interesting. But it, but it was a good show. Maybe top ten, top twelve, just because it's the new era. So that carries a lot of weight. And because it was a two night spectacle and spectacular, seventy thousand plus fans outside in the elements. Your so. answer is about to be a two night spectacular. <laughs> yeah. you know, why don't you keep? Why don't you keep going into the next show, Phil? Why don't you just keep talking? Yeah. We're here all night, folks. Joe, the irony, <laughs> the irony of that is not lost. Uh, anyway, let's let's uh, stop there. All right. All right. Well, nice job, Phil. Nice job. <laughs> Beautiful job, Phil. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. boy. Like you're next up on the thirty. Let's do ready? it. Dan Absolutely. Man. Let's go. All right. Where do I rank this? Uh, clearly, I was more impressed with just the spectacle. This is statistically, by um, objective measurements, the biggest WrestleMania of all time as far as ticket sales for the weekends, box office revenue, among other things. Um, as far as the quality of the show, top 10, definitely. Um, I, I could see arguments for it being seven or eight. Um, I wouldn't say top five. I think there's too many classics out there. 
I'm going to agree with the president. Uh, not that WrestleMania three was the best ever. I think Hogan slamming Andre is the biggest and greatest moment in the history of professional wrestling for what it did. So, but, but the, the match itself, History going to look differently on that one. Um, my personal pick for the best WrestleMania of all time is, is WrestleMania 17. Um, you had, e even though history is, uh, you know, they're going to look back a little differently on the on the end of the Austin Rock match. Uh, it's funny. I was giving uh, Mr. President some slack on uh, uh, his answer. One of my favorite calls, one of the matches they had at WrestleMania 17 was the gimmick Battle Royal. Bobby, they brought Bobby Heenan back for commentary, and, <laughs> and, and he said the uh, the Iron you know, WrestleMania X seventeen, nah. and they introduced the Iron Sheik. He goes, "Man, by the Iron time, time the Iron Sheik gets to the ring, Love it'll it. be WrestleMania 50. You know? <laughs> and, and that's Classic. what I was thinking. We're, awesome. we're talking about WrestleMania forty. By the time President was done with his answer, it was going to be WrestleMania forty five. Like totally. <laughs> but uh, no, a WrestleMania X seven. You had too many TLC match gimmick battle royal Austin Rock two. You had just too many good moments. It's you know for what it was, it was awesome. Nice yeah. job, Dan. Nice job. He claims the lead. What a <laughs> Jesus, mother of God. Look at that. Football <laughs> scores coming at you. Yeah, well, hey, it's a high scoring day. Look at this. All you guys doing good. Benny, why don't you keep it up? You're up on the 30. You ready? Got my uh, partner here too to help me. Uh, 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 is such a sweet we're gonna start calling these pet things cheap pops because every time <laughs> someone uh, this is crazy, unbelievable. All right. Alex, two strows, please. You're Roof. On the 30. Yeah, uh, greatest of all time? Nah. I mean, maybe it had the most sizzle, the most anticipation. It certainly was from like a metric standpoint, you know, the biggest, but the best? Nah, I'm going to go. I mean, for me, from my perspective, WrestleMania won just because of the fact that we, we had never seen it before. You know, it was a whole new thing for us. And just, you know, the glitz and the glamour you had. You had Liberace, you had Billy Martin, you had Muhammad Ali. I mean, just a cast of celebrities that... We had never seen before and just you know i mean the, the card was okay but you know the the newness of it all uh makes it one of the best and then also uh now wrestlemania 3 we just had on jessica salt dan and i on tuesday night daughter of bobby the brain heenan and you know i really think that bobby heenan did not get enough credit for building up that match with hulk hogan and andre because when when on that piper's pit i think it was february the 7th uh, a couple of months before the show, before WrestleMania, when 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 Andre walked out and Heenan was right behind him, even I, like who knew the score of professional wrestling, I said, "Holy shit, this just like this just amped it up a uh, seventeen notches." And the way the way that Heenan just pushed the match, and you know, I don't think Andre could have done that. You know, Andre was a giant, but he couldn't really talk. He needed Heenan to uh you know to to do that for him so no not not the greatest of all time nice job benny not nice the job greatest benny. Is it Ooh, benny's all right lead? what the hell well, those yeah. four points man those freaking four points i'm well, telling you going to be coming with pros and pets next week right <laughs> unbelievable. Hey, unbelievable i'm gonna give him a couple extra points for the dog too i know i know i i can't put my I can't she's put uh, she's in getting the fixed on monday and she's a little bit nervous so i gotta uh -oh. i gotta comfort her uh oh she's she's uh yeah uh -oh. bob barker would be proud bob barker. yeah absolutely <laughs> and the reminder have you your dogs and cats spayed and neutered i remember that jesus <laughs> yeah all right guys next little week, pa little patty's in the house say hi to little patty hey, hi little patty kansas city yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, guys. I just said hi to her. Next up. The WWE is really distancing themselves from Vince McMahon. Uh, the, the Hall of Fame speech, Paul Heyman stated that he was a Paul Levesque guy. The whole WrestleMania weekend was the Paul Levesque era. The term sports entertainment seems to be going by the wayside. How do you feel about this new era? Should McMahon be scrubbed from wrestling history? Do you think this is bothering Vince at all? Or is he just laughing on his way to the bank, gradually selling off his shares of TKO? All right, let's see. Looks like, Benny, you're going to be up uh, up on the 30 this time. Let's get you up there. At 30. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, how do you <laughs> – an era? I mean, it, it's been a couple of weeks. I, I think it's a little bit too, too soon to say anything like that. You know, as far as Vince McMahon – do I think it bothers him? I mean, now, you know, you're asking us to, to play Dr. Phil here, but um, I have, I would have to say, yes, it bothers him. It bothers, I, I would think it's like crushing him right now because this is the man's life, life's work. I mean, 
for the last 40 years, you know, 20 hours a day. What did he do? He built the WWE. It's been, it's been taken away from him. So how could that not affect him? Money or no money? I mean, money is great up to a certain point, but I think a man of Vince McMahon's ego and pride, it's, it's got to be. It's got to be soul crushing. I mean, that does he deserve it? I guess we're going to find out. I don't want to say yes because right now everything's still an allegation. Nothing has been proven yet. Um, I, you know, I, I see improvements. I mean, from what I see, just the fact that they can say wrestler and wrestling, I like it. I mean, I, I did enjoy this WrestleMania. I mean, maybe it wasn't the best one of all time, but it was my favorite one for at least the past 10 years. So I, I do see, you know, I'm, I look forward to that on Monday night. I look forward to Friday night. I look forward to these PLEs. So I'm, I am anxious to see what Paul Levesque is going to do. But, yeah, Vince, Vince is not – Vince is crying, but it's not all the way to the bank. Yeah, all right. Nice job, Benny. Vinny Mac. Vinny Mac. Nice job. He hits 40 in two questions. Jesus Christ, there's no way I can come back from this. This is oh, unbelievable. You're not that far behind you. You're within two points there, Joe. You're two touchdowns away. I'm sorry. I went to North Quincy High. I, got, I don't know math very well. So. Get out of here. <laughs> and I went to school with Missy Beefcake. Miss <laughs> Kate. All right. Hey, Dan, she was Val Victorian. Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. Next on the third. Are you ready? Absolutely. Let's Are go. you ready? Yeah, no. You 100% noticed that Vince McMahon is gone and not just – the fact that he's gone, but his cronies too. The the production quality has skyrocketed now that that bucktooth no talent hack retired, and you Ooh. have actual sports people running it. The shot last last week on Monday Night Raw, the long shot where it followed Jay Uso outside and then followed Sami Zayn to the ring, is probably one of the best single takes I have ever seen in that WWE was history. That was Phenomenal good. camera work. Yeah. Is Vince crying? Yes, he's he's sad, he, but because he's an egomaniac who is now being told repeatedly every day, assuming he checks the phone or the computer, how much better this company is without him. If they were failing, he'd be laughing all the way to the bank. They are succeeding in ways he could never have in his old senile age. Not to play a pun, but I'm sure he thinks what's happening is really shitty and uh, it's, just, it's it's sad because he's got he's you know he's seeing it as a bad thing. I guarantee he's seeing it as a bad thing because this isn't this is my company and they're running it better than I could. Yeah, okay, he's got a couple billion dollars in his pocket, but he's got no self respect. No one care. And and the worst part is I doubt, doubt anyone fears him. But to answer your the first part of your question, should he be erased from history? No. In the WWE video game where they blurred his face, I think that's ridiculous. You can't talk about the WWE without him, but you can ignore knowledge that you've moved on from him nice job Amen. Dan. Nice. really Amen. Nice. to jesus Christ. Yeah. yep wow. and joe you uh you lost a point there loose cannon took one point off of uh, 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 uh for uh for a missy loose. Reference. oh loose. Christ. loose i thought you were on my side man thanks <laughs> loose my god appreciate you <laughs> all right all right looks like uh joe it looks like you're up next on the 30 i'm up I'm up. Okay. So All you right. Gotta, you got a little bit more to make up, but uh, if anybody can do it, you can. Okay. Let's go. All right. First and, for, first and foremost, I mentioned this uh, during WrestleMania weekend. They shoved the Paul Levesque everything down our throats, which tells me that when this whole thing with this lawsuit is settled, Vince McMahon, TKO is going to clean house even more. What they're going to do is anybody related to the McMahons or has any affiliation with the McMahons will be out of a job after this lawsuit is settled and so forth. Now, today I posted that Vince McMahon, there was a piece on him with NBC News. Two people, anonymous guys, came forward and said that Vince McMahon is enjoying life. He's been vacationing, cashing out his stocks. And he's actually uh, went to Turks and Caicos on a private plane, came back with like 11 kittens, seven kittens and a dog that he adopted. He's been seen in New York City dining very well. He's living a posh lifestyle in Connecticut. They said he's not worried about the lawsuit. Why? Because nothing is going to happen with the lawsuit. They have till May 14th to respond. John Laurinaitis and him were served on my, uh, April 14th. May 14th will be the day that we'll see uh, what the real evidence is because Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis have already responded. So look for that date to be very, very important uh, in this court process with Janelle Grant's um, lawsuit. As for McMahon himself and the WWE, 
Yeah, they're distancing themselves. You could see the change in Raw and SmackDown. Great Raw this past week with Sami Zayn at entrance. SmackDown. Actually, we didn't mention the new Raw tag belts. That's another change, which means SmackDown tag belts will probably be different this Friday as well. But I think Vince McMahon is not worried about this lawsuit the way he's doing it. And he's finally, uh, I think he's pretty much cashed out of TKO uh, this week. They bought him out. So he is officially gone, gone from the WWE. You're stealing my gimmick, Joe. I'm sorry. I went over. I it's my gimmick. And I'm it's still, gimmick infringement. And I'm still freaking cash me, cash cash me outside, out Cash me outside, man. Yes. You know, I think Moose Cannon's <laughs> going to screw me with this outside interference because I'd be tied with the player right now. Mother of God. Somebody call somebody. Quick, quick, Benny. <laughs> Mention that you think Nick, uh, Koloff needs to be in the Hall of Fame. So they oh, can no, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I don't want to lose a point. <laughs> Tony Gurria and Rick Martell, Hall of Fame. Come on. You got a redundancy deduction there. Bill Apter, Hall of Fame. Come on. Cindy Lauper, Hall of Fame. Come on. All right. I'm sorry, Phil. All right, Phil. This is your question. You ready? I guess so. All right, let's go. I mean, really, what what do we expect with Vince anyway? Do we could we really see him riding off into the sunset quietly, like some meek and humbled, decrepit old man? You know, um, not at all. You, you talk about someone who was became the ultimate heel in the business, and and you talk about the business uh, and living the gimmick uh, and, and certainly well beyond living the gimmick in, in Vince's case. Um, can't a- answer any questions about does he have self-respect for only he really knows if he does. Um, yeah, he just came back from a couple weeks in Italy, I believe, as well, Joe. I know yeah. you mentioned Turk is, Turks and everywhere. Caicos, too, yeah. and time. spent a few weeks over on the boot, and that, that had to do him some good, too. Um yeah, I, I think it's a healthy thing that he distanced himself, obviously, for the business and for himself to kind of step away and, and take some time. He's a non-compete till January 2025. Yeah. And there are whisp- whisperings and rumblings that, hey, he might start something up again. And what better way to, to try to renew oneself than to um, start from scratch all over again? I know he's almost 80 and there are those arguments to be made. And of course, the question is who will work with him. Maybe some family will work with him. I don't know. Maybe in the crazy landscape of wrestling, he somehow does something with um, AEW. Stranger things have happened, okay? So I think Vince is going to be all right. I don't think he uh, the criminal charges are going to uh, uh, really carry any weight, and I, I don't think he's going to uh, be affected by that. But um, I don't know. I can't even see my timer, man. I don't even have a timer, do I? You're out of time. Am I? Where am I? Bruce, talk to me. You're out of time, Phil, but you know I'm not going to interrupt you. You're the hey, president. really quick. 99% oh. of these lawsuits that are going to court right now are settled out of court. Right. 99%. So, you know, we'll see. What, yeah, Vince you doesn't know, seem worried at all right now, but May 14th is an important date, so keep that on your docket. No this has been the week of unearth, uh, unearth, or the, or the past couple of weeks, unearth yeah. uh, love letters, of course, or or denials, or what have you. We had Janelle Grant, of course, yeah. with the alleged letter from uh, to Vince, the the love letter, and what have you. And apparently, Stormy Daniels had written something several years ago, uh, denying any type of relationship to our former president, too. So, yeah, kind of curious. I'm curious to see how these two documents are going to fit into these you know legal proceedings and what kind of weight they're going to get but yeah. kind of funny those two things just kind of happened you know and Unbelievable. who knows what the truth is so okay guys listen well we've got to take another commercial break and when we come back we're going to start another talking about up. the women of wrestling we will be right back the monty and the pharaoh show is brought to you by because wine is your second favorite four letter word California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. Tired of that same old, same old breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Same old tasting scrambled eggs, burger, that dinner steak, ribs, or pork chops. Why not add a little bit of spice or just a touch of heat to make the difference? Change that scrambled egg with a little bit of Johnny Fabulous's John Cena Sr.'s Million Dollar Jalapeno Hot Sauce. Great on burgers, steaks, chops, and those barbecued ribs. 
and Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage, ask for Jack. Do you treat your dog as part of the family? <laughs> well, so do we. So why not celebrate your pup's birthday with the ultimate party box? Check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Party Pup Info, and let us make your pup's party or any celebration perfection. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. Sport and non-sport cards, wrestling items, autographed items. We buy, sell, and trade. M&J Video Games and Collectibles, located at 1049 Queen Street, Southington, Connecticut. Call us at 1-860-479-9223 or 860-93-GAMES. M&J Video Games and Collectibles. And welcome back to the 32 from our chatters and chatties alike. Thank you for sticking with us through these commercial messages. Ever important, you know. Uh, we've got a pretty tight game going on. I don't know how I'm feeling personally, but, um, you know, if I were to take the Vegas uh, line, I would be a rich man because I would not bet on myself. But anyway, Ooh. it's a great game. The salad does beckon from the kitchen, but I'm in no rush for it, so... Let's do our best, guys. Let's bruise and cruise, do okay? It. And, and do it. If, if it makes you feel any better, I wouldn't bet, bet on you either. So, Hey, if I win, can I get a cat? Hey, guys. <laughs> guys <laughs> I take we, very we one good he, He's got some spares. Really quick, yeah. really quick, just to let you know, if you are ever attacked by a mob of clowns, go for the jugular. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Look like Judge Wapner with that hammer there. With these puns, he's really trying to lose points, isn't he? Right. Oh, <laughs> I, think, I think he's about to get about to tie the president here. <laughs> what? All right, guys, let, let's get into this. So right. th this past Monday, it was revealed that Liv Morgan's attack on Rhea Ripley caused real injuries yeah. to Rhea, and she had to relinquish the woman's title due to this. This effectively turned Liv heel and solidified Rhea's big face return when she comes yeah. back. Fans have been very vocal and even sending threats to live because of this, while others can't wait for this already hot feud to continue. Who will get Rhea's title? What do you think of the fans' reactions? And what do you th and do you think it was a good move for the WWE to strip Rhea of that title? So let's see. It looks like looks like Mr. President, you're back on the thirty. Oh, oh and the <laughs> clock sounds my to my demise. We'll see. All right, um, let's go. Let's see. Was it a good decision to strip Rhea of the title? Yes, okay? This is the only way you can really stop her momentum right now. And it's projected she's going to be out for at least three months. And that's that's a fair amount of time. I know we can argue Roman Reigns, you know, his defense schedule. But I think the women might be a different story. I think Roman was kind of uh, the exception to the rule. Uh, so it will be good. It will build some drama, help her with a face turn, create some sympathy for her. As far as who's going to step into the role... Um, don't know. Good question. Um, do we look towards some of our newcomers? Do we look towards some of our veterans? How long is Charlotte Flair out for? When, you know, when is she projected to come back? I'm not sure. I don't, I'm not sure that I know the answer to that right now. Um, a tournament would be a great idea, certainly. And I don't know what they propose to actually, uh, to handle the situation. So, um, Oh, who did they just acquire too? Who's really incredible and hot? Um, oh God, Tiffany Stratton. Not to, well. Tiffany Stratton is great, but no, 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 Jade no, no. Jade Cargill. Yes, definitely on the list. You better give me I'm points get, for this. I'm getting a little Bidenitis here. I can't remember names, but I don't see dead people yet. But uh, I think Jade Cargill would be a great uh, champion interim, and it would really help a few, um, build a feud with with Rhea. And uh, again, they're going to turn Rhea face anyway, and I think this is a great way to do it to get the sympathy. And you don't want to risk any further injury with her keeping her going, okay? And again, another argument for having a lot of talent on hand because the injury bug is rampant, okay? Right. So you need backup, and I don't know where my time is, but <laughs> that's all I got. You've been at zero since last <laughs> Thursday. <laughs> you you, you got to remember, when you say, I don't know what the time is, Phil, you're out of time. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Listen, so, Joe, it looks oh, like boy. you're next on the 30. You got some, you got some, uh, <laughs> yeah, points you got to catch up here. So, 
Let's I just sent it. the Venmo. I just sent the Venmo. That ten percent surcharge is killing me, but whatever. Let's go. All right, LMRT, the hashtag that's been heard around the world. The Live Morgan Revenge Tour kicks off. You know, she was right. What happened uh, a few months back? You know, everyone forgets that uh, Rhea Ripley destroyed Liv Morgan's shoulder as well. So, as Liv Morgan said on this past Monday Night Raw, an eye for an eye. So there you go. Uh, Rhea Ripley, obviously, if you're relinquishing the title, even in a storyline, something's up. So Rhea Ripley, yeah, she hurt her shoulder supposedly against. Um, if you notice, she didn't have her wrist cast on uh, this week when she relinquished the title and it was the other shoulder. So there might be some stuff going on with Rhea Ripley that she needs to have addressed because obviously whenever she comes back, it's going to be a Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley showdown. I just heard recently I want to say as early as yesterday or the day before that this Monday Night Raw, they are crowning the new women's championship. They're giving it to somebody. I don't know if it's going to be a tournament all night long, but there is going to be a new women's champion crowned on Monday Night Raw, the April 22nd uh, Raw or whatever. So, you know, this is going to be uh, – it's quite an angle. This, if this is the Paul Levesque era, then he's got everybody thinking – now, we, we're in the post-Rock environment now. Ratings uh, for everything has gone down since The Rock left us. Uh, Raw is now back to its 1.7, 1.8 million after crowning 2 million last week. So, uh, new women's champion going to be crowned this Monday. And who's it going to be? I honestly think Liv Morgan's going to get her turn to shine. So, she's going to have quite the setup with uh, people. So, all right. Look at that. Woo-hoo. There you go, Joe. Nice That's job, the great news. New women's champion coming this Friday. You heard it here first, folks. This Monday night. Excuse me. Monday night, Monday night Raw. New new women's champion. <laughs> and Benny. Look at those arms. Do that again, Benny. You're fucking built, man. Look at that. Jesus. Nice guns. The right, gun. Benny, you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. He's ready. All right. So was it necessary to strip Rhea? He said strip. Come yeah. On. It was. And what a what a shame. But I think in the long run, it's actually going to help her. I think she's going to get a huge baby face pop when she returns. But you know, I for one do not get this Liv Morgan revenge tour thing. Yes, I know kayfabe is over, and we're supposed to suspend our disbelief. But I got to tell you, it's very hard for me to take anyone who isn't big enough to ride the rides at the amusement uh, park seriously. You know, you, it's like you must be this big to you know the little kid. She's not even that yeah. big. I mean, Roxanne nothing Perez, against Liv. Roxanne Perez. Too yeah, too I mean, tall, she yeah. seems nice enough, but you know, I do. She had a be- she has a beautiful Italian name, Gianna Dadio. Dadio, yeah. She shit can that for Liv Morgan. Come on, come they on. Call, they call her Gina at home. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, I just cannot say Rhea Ripley or Liv Morgan in the same sentence. I can't even. <laughs> I can't even say Charlotte Flair, Bianca Belair, or Asuka and Liv Morgan in the same sentence. Now. <laughs> We talked about Harley Race and the uh, the lady the little person, yeah. Darling yeah. Dagmar and Diamond Lil. Now I can talk about those two <laughs> and Liv Morgan in the same set. That yeah. that I could do. So <laughs> Liv, just some advice. But if you want to start a revenge tour, you know you know who you should start with. You should start with the Sumter County, New Jersey police who busted you. Ooh. Hey, those those charges were cleared, Benny. That was settled out of court. No charges. Her her record has been expunged. It wasn't her pot. Yeah. No. <laughs> wasn't even yeah. there. Yeah. That's all right. It happens. That's all right. She hangs up. a lot of pictures of her where she looks a little stoned. She, uh, yeah, the, see the bags under her eyes, too. She covers it up. But uh, she's. Was Hacks on the Iron Sheik in I the backseat? <laughs> I think any, any company that puts a title on Riddle loses, uh, oh, loses yeah. the high ground in criticizing people for, for marijuana use. Don't forget, Liv Morgan and Bo Dallas live together. They have a farm. Just let you. I was going to say they've been a couple for a couple for years now, yeah. haven't they? Yeah, they went to Dominic's wedding. Um, mm-hmm. There's some pictures there of that one. There's another wedding too, a few months back that they went to as well. So, right. hey Dan, you have a chance here to eliminate two people in one round. What do you oh, think sh- about those odds? Uh, well, uh, right now I'm sitting, uh, according to, uh, our chat, I'm, I'm at odds of plus 100. So I'll take the, I told Luce, I'll take those odds. So let's do it. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Looks like you're next on the 30. So let's go. 
All right. Sick, I will be honest with you. My initial reaction to hearing that they were going to strip Rhea of the title was kind of a raised eyebrow because you're telling me she might not be able to defend the title for a month or two and she has to lose it immediately. Roman Reigns defended the title f- six times in a year and a half. But, you know, I, I get that that's different. Now I look back on it and the more I think about it, the more I see the brace and the way you go back and rewatch her match with Becky. I think Rhea was was a banged up, maybe not fully hurt, but banged up going into it. And the angle with Liv is just an excuse to give her some time off, get that needed surgery, keep the momentum. Like, like it was said earlier, which I a hundred percent agree with stripping her of the title because of an injury is the only way you're going to stop her momentum. She is the hottest thing you have in, in, in more ways than one in the company right now. I mean, you got Cody, you got Rhea, you got some skyrocketing stars. Uh, as for the title, Really, I hate to say it, you have to put it on Liv because you've built that. You can't put it on somebody like Anaya Jax and have Rhea come out and cost Liv the title because you're already doing that script verbatim with the CM Punk Drew McIntyre. You can't have the same storyline for men and women on the same show. So you really have to kind of put it on Liv, let her win heelishly, let her really embrace this this okay. tour, and more importantly, the best heels are the ones that tell the truth. Liv is pissed off because Rhea is all of a sudden, you you attacked me from behind, you coward. Well, you attacked her from behind six months ago yeah. and put her on the shelf. It's great stuff. Absolutely, I think Liv's winning the title. I love I love how she says, watch me. <laughs> okay. Whoa! 55. Say, Joe? What? You lost the title. How did I lose a title? Oh, no. That's an I'm elimination tied with round. Phil. I'm yeah. tied with Phil. And this was an elimination round. And guess what? I'm oh, eliminated. Phil's gone, too. This is like this the eliminators. Old, old move. Total right? elimination, Lord man. Phil, you, you, it's it always just, a pleasure, my friend. I, thank you. I am filing. Happy Thursday. I'm filing a grievance. This is horse radish. I don't like it. <laughs> I'll tell you. Shut, Kate, shut they, the they, front door. They oh. love throwing numbers out. Kane oh has the most career eliminations in the Rumble, but he's got nothing on the limit number of eliminations I've had. But guys, seriously, the w- <laughs> seriously though, the WWE announced they are crowning a new champion on Monday. How they do it, I have no idea. But this well, I don't know. That's, that's crazy because we're crowning a new champion tonight. Oh, this is more crap. <laughs> more crap. Ouch. 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 Groundbreaking. Note, later, Joe. Right. We'll be, we'll Good be, luck, guys. We'll Good luck. Just a minute. I'm All in right. the background. I'm in the background. I'm watching. May the force be with you. I, I can't mic like drop this. Uh, this is clipped in, but I would if I could come up with it. <laughs> well, listen. Let me go reset everybody's numbers while we're oh. while we're here. You and me again, Benny. Yep. Loose cannon screwed me. I'm gonna Dan and Benny thing. <laughs> Loose cannon. Dan and Benny in the right thing. Joe's going to come in with like hamsters and turtles and he's going to have like everything in the background. He's going to have a a guitar he's playing. He's going to have a harp, everything. You you forget, I'm in the middle of the Midwest now. I can go find a taxidermist and bring a friggin' real deer in here. I'll (laughs) stop and, uh, you know, anything I want. So, yeah. You're you're going to bring a hamster. Just 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 make sure it's not Richard Gears. (laughs) Ouch. The pencil has spoken. These guys are riot in the chat. Oh, you know what? The, the the active chat is is easily half to two thirds of the fun of this show. Oh, absolutely. Oh man. All right. Hey, you job, guys. Bill and Joe. So it comes down to Dan and the player. Let's. Uh, what's the chat saying on on who's going to win tonight? <laughs> Plus one for Dan. I see. Plus they one. Have, I think Dan's, Dan's the odds on. Oh, Dan, yeah, they are. They're definitely rooting for Dan. Uh, just because they're rooting for Dan, you know what, Benny? I'm going to give you two extra points just because of you know, the uh, – the, uh, <laughs> Oh, the oh wow. All right. Crazy. Oh, thank this you. Is what the, the – oh, oh, two. Oh, two. Jesus. There we go. Are you kidding me? <laughs> talk about talk about a handicap. <laughs> Wow, it's like it's like golf. Benny's Benny's uh swinging <laughs> off the off the women's tees. Love it. All right, I'm just resetting a timer here. Reset let's get into this timer. last question. While we're on the discussion of women, Jade Cargill's finally made her debut. Bailey got one yeah. of the largest ovations at WrestleMania. We've got Oscar. We've got Zayn. We've got. EO, we've got Dakota, we've got Liv. And this is even without some of the bigger players that are sitting on the on the sidelines just waiting for that call to come back. You know, the Charlotte, the Alexa Bliss. They're just waiting for that call. The list goes on and on. Right now, women's wrestling in the WWE hasn't been this healthy in years, if ever. 
Where would you see, where do you see the women's division going, and how would you book it? Playa, you're first under thirty. Let's yeah. Go. Well, I mean, that all changed, uh, you know, because we had a very dominant Raw champion uh, that suddenly got injured that we now have to put on the shelf. And uh, yeah, I do agree. You know, you know, my my short jokes aside, that Liv Morgan will, will probably win. Um, albeit for a short amount of time, because I think once Rhea comes back, I think she takes the belt back. I mean, she is the best thing that I've seen in many a year. And I think she needs to be the hunted rather than the hunter. Um, I Now, I, I like Jade Cargill. Everybody's going crazy over Jade Cargill. I think she will be a huge star. She's already got the look. I don't think she has the skills yet. I think she's very green. Um, she's made some huge improvements. I guess when they got her, she was pretty much not. I wouldn't don't want to say damaged goods, but she was definitely a work in process at the very beginning of the journey. So I mean, they they ha, they've done a lot with her. They still need to do a lot with her. But I got to tell you though, you know, as a fan of professional wrestling, I was never really a big women's wrestling fan. But you have so many. You got Oscar, like you said. You have Bailey. You have you have Rhea eventually coming back. You have Liv. You have Bianca Belair, you have Cargill. I mean, the list goes on and on. Even, you know, even the, the you know, the not so stellar people anymore. You got, you know, the Naomi's, you got the Natalia's. It's just, it's stacked. It is stacked, and there's a lot of talent there. All right. Nice job, Benny. He sets that bar what? high at, at 14. Dan, you've hit that. Dan, number. is it a Bucky's Cup? It is. Ah, no Good wonder Bucky's. the reference earlier. Love the Bucky's oh, wow, Cup. Love Bucky's. Nice. Bucky's. Right. Bum, bum. Well, you think we should give Dan a point for the Bucky's Cup too? Bucky, Bucky's. Wait, hey, listen to you, Mister yeah. Point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 point show right. because give Benny another one. The 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 largest <laughs> the largest. I didn't get any fan, cup points though. The 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 largest <laughs> fan Bucky's that they're going to build is going to yeah. be about fifty minutes from the house. Oh, so glorious! I'm going to end up having to take a second mortgage when my wife starts going Love up there it. a couple times a week. <laughs> it's, a great, it's a great place though. She, she's from Texas, so she's been a Bucky's fiend her entire life. Oh, love it. Nice. Love it. She's I'll do honors to Kevin Dunn, too. You know, we got to give Benny another point because he's taken that. He, talk about uh, population of uh, pet pet population control, man. He's doing the ultimate, the sacrifice, yeah. taking that yeah. sweet little thing in for uh, a he's procedure. Very, listen, this is a presidential order. I guess I have to oblige. Whoa. You know what? We got, we got to give Dan a point for the Buckies, too. How can we not? I did give Dan the point for the Buckies, but now oh, you good, give good, Benny good. one, too. Awesome. <laughs> so I guess it's fair. Good, good. Yeah. Dan, you, Dan, you did. You had gained one, one back. Oh, yeah. Him, but... You took away three. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dan, listen. You get a point. It's going to be your turn on the 30. Are you ready for this? Yeah, why not? I might as well waste a few minutes before we, we hand the title to Benny on a silver platter. <laughs> oh, hey, that's geez. also my gimmick. <laughs> All right, Dan, let's go. All right, well, you talk about the women's wrestling. You are 100% correct that women's wrestling is the hottest and best it's been probably ever in the history of the company. I, you think about you between Raw and SmackDown and NXT up in the wind, you have anywhere between 12 to, to 18. You could sometimes argue 20 different women that are legitimate champions they have two women's heavyweight champions and they need them because you've got two great divisions you ask about jade cargill i think they're doing it right they're going to team her with bianca they're going to break off the ring rust she's greener than a pepper tree they're going to work on her until she's good enough then she's going to turn on bianca she's going to be the biggest heel they've got so you're going to have face Rhea. you got Liv. you got charlotte coming back charlotte just posted a video of her doing the two-step work with her knee still in a brace she's coming along fast absolutely this company is on fire it's going to be huge and you've still got becky in the wing becky just commented she's going to be on the european tour so dave Meltzer wrong again that she's taking time off i know dave Meltzer being wrong is probably a huge surprise to people but you've got everything this division right now is bigger than sheamus's new new physique it's just absolutely oh, God. Wow. no i know i, 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 I can't I, I, I still, he can still kick my ass but the point is no you talk about the division Liv's gonna win the title on raw bailey's building up with her feud with naomi they've still got a big deal on smackdown you got at least four or five women there uh joe's future ex-wife tiffy's coming out she's gonna have to be a challenge <laughs> you've got a lot you've got a lot of stuff going this division is on fire right on 
Wow. Oh, nice job, Dan, but not quite enough. Whoa. Wow. You did call it. All right. Those extra That's points fixed. really uh, cost everybody. I'll take it. Dan, up, up one of four. expect more cat tricks yeah. and some better bribes. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Best of luck to Bree, really. You let's know what? Bring, I, let's bring these other two back the, in here. The, I'll I'll take it. You know, they always say you can hold your head up high. You gave Benny the to, what seven points at some point during this game, and he still only beat me by one in the end. I, I so, think it was something like 40, 45 points, you know, something like that. Hey, hey guys, hey guys, come on. Hey guys, come on. Br- come on. in the garden isn't as protected as Benny was tonight. Hey guys, did you know that? Oh, hey, did you guys know nice that? Reference. Did you guys know that Adam and Eve were the first ones to ignore Apple terms and conditions? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's a good one. Come on. That's a good one. Look at that. Look at that. It, it, it's only too late. I can't take any more points away from him, guys. I'm sorry. Oh, well. Who's that? Adam and Evil? Adam and Evil? <laughs> oh, my Look at these guys chatting away in the chat. My God. Okay, they're having a ball there. So, yeah, give a Loose- great, great, chat, great chat going today. Thanks, guys, for everything. I, I popped in when I could, but you know, it's a, a little tough producing and uh, Bruce, interacting Bruce, at the same time. Bruce, you're taking a beating. Loose Cannon said, Bruce could fall asleep on the keyboard and give you a plus nine 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 yeah, nine nine. Yep, yep. All right, <laughs> Luce. One of these days we're coming up. Steel cage match somewhere around Danbury. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. Right. Unbelievable. All Love right, it. Guys, hey, listen, you guys got uh, anything you want to plug? Dan, why don't you uh, why don't you start telling us about that that interview you guys did the other day? That yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I, I a lot of the names that are in the chat right now were with us, and, and some of the faces on this panel were everybody actually on this panel was with us. Uh, la- this this week, Dan and Benny in the Ring did our very first live episode. We interviewed Ooh, live. We, we, we talked about the life and legacy of Bobby the Brain Heenan, talking with yeah. his daughter, who, by the way, if you saw the video, you talk about family resemblance. Look like them, talk <laughs> like them, the no block. filter, and it was the cadence. <laughs> and by the way, uh, you have to watch the video. I'm not going to spoil it. She threw out her honest opinion of Tony Schiavone, and it's probably one of the Ooh, greatest sentences yeah. I have ever heard spoken in a wow. wrestling interview ever. So clip from, it, clip uh, it, make a going, short of it. Clip going, it, make a short of it. Forward, it, it is. It's already posted. We'll be live yeah. on the YouTube page, and then our podcast will get uploaded as usual. And we are nice. just chugging along, and it's great stuff. Nice. Awesome. You guys did a great live show the other guys the other day, guys. I know it was your first one, and uh, what what a person was to gold. have on it. That uh, was a great interview. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was a great time. Nice. Hey, player, what what do you have? What else do you have? Well, we we we're gonna have a true crime probably in a couple of weeks, and then of course tomorrow night we have Wrestling Remembered hosted by Joe Whataday, and Ooh. we're gonna talk about. Well, I don't, don't want to. He'll tell you about that. I don't want to steal his thunder. <laughs> All right, well, why don't we turn he it over He spits lightning and craps thunder. There he is. Why don't we turn it over to Joe? Joe, like why the don't you tell us about Wrestling Remembered? Yeah, Wrestling Remembered is coming up tomorrow night. I do believe 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 my time. We're going to uh, highlight some epic promos. Yes, epic promos. So many of them. Danny's yeah. on there. First one that comes to mind is always my favorite, Dusty Rhodes, Hard Times. Uh, hard we'll time. probably kick it over that. Uh, Phil, uh, both uh, Phil and Dan have contributed Bruce, I'm waiting to hear from you so I get some graphics for that. Uh, Sunday night, uh, this is kind of breaking news. Sunday night, I'm going to have uh, a ring boy guy, uh, Gerard Millette's coming back on the show. Oh, the return of Gerard. Uh, he's got some. He's got the goods. He's got the goods this time. Let we got start. proof. Let's see what he has Bruce. to say about uh, what's Lee his Cole. name there. <laughs> he is going to destroy Lee Cole. He's got some new. It's all lies. Lee Cole is just a big, fat liar, and he wants him exposed. So he's uh, he's coming on. We're gonna do it live Sunday night at seven o'clock. Uh, I think it's eight o'clock. You guys, we're yeah. gonna get him on. And me and Phil are actually collaborating on something special. We'll probably make an announcement on that soon. But um, waiting in the wings is Harley Race's son, Justin Race. He wants to come on what a day uh, and talk about his dad and so forth. He's been he's been on Facebook lately, throwing out some unbelievable family pictures of Harley race uh, back in the day, even when Harley was young and uh, Justin was young. These are great, great photos, but uh, a lot going on. There is a lot going on, you know, with a week off, a lot can happen. And uh, I want to thank Monty and the Pharaoh and the channel and everybody for allowing us to be on this. So uh, you got to tune in Monty and the Pharaoh, hit that subscribe button. Uh, as you can see right here, they are on every social media platform available Check us Absolutely. out, these guys. Remember, we'll get a big show coming up in a few minutes, too, right? Yep. yep. Right yep. here, so? Yep. Yeah, they'll, so, they'll uh, be on live at 9 p.m. Um, they're uh, not sure what the topic is tonight. But, uh, hey, Phil, what do you have to, what do you have to uh, plug this week? 
Well, again, uh, part of Wrestling Remembered, and uh, if I want to give a shout-out to the promo I chose, it is uh, Steve Austin, uh, ECW. He had a yeah. seven-minute promo I got that, that I actually remembered yeah. verbatim back in the day. I can't remember anything anymore, but it was incredible. <laughs> it really was unbelievable, his imitations and just his sheer honesty, his intensity, and he was bridging the gap between stunning and stone cold in that superstar status. Love it. And it was just, it was indicative of, of all these ECW great promos oh, yeah. of the past. Oh, yeah. But it really was the, the collab, the bridging between WCW and WWF at the time. Yeah. Phenomenal. When I saw that, I, I just said, he, he's going to the moon and back. He's just yeah. incredible. Uh, and uh, stone cold. Would you say that his promo, his 316 promo, really launched the Attitude Era? Oh, it definitely funny. did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, and you know, I, it, I think that was that seminal moment that changed yeah. things around. It absolutely did. Then ringmaster to Stone Cold, absolutely. And, and to yeah. think, to think that it was, you know, the, they, they always tell the story. You talk about butterfly effect. It wasn't even supposed to happen. Yeah, you know, that was supposed to be Triple H up there cutting the promo, cutting about right. something. Yeah. And the fact that they Austin three sixteen came off the top of his head wasn't even scripted so i mean and he did it with a busted lip if yeah. you, ironically with a busted lip that required stitches so fascinating in its own right but yeah That's just almost 30 years ago and that is probably yeah. the of, of all shirts of all times that austin 316 i would bet is in the in it, the top 10 selling oh, shirts every, every once in a while when they mention merchandise they say it's the best selling shirt in the company history you know, i, 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 I still company, have the original say, shirt from 96 yeah, it's, it's Austin, Austin 316, 316, the NWO, and because uh, they, they, I assume they claim WCW's numbers too, but NWO and Hulkamania are always the three what, that are up what there. Was that, yeah. What was that one Nature Boy Buddy Rogers back in the 650s? And he grabbed the microphone and said, it couldn't happen to a nicer guy. To a nicer guy, it yeah. couldn't happen. That was probably yeah. one of the first times a wrestler actually probably said something. Was, on live on TV, I would say unscripted because he grabbed that microphone. I don't know what he was going to say, but he said it couldn't happen. Nice guy. That's a big, that's an epic promo right there. And Bill After used yeah. to walk around saying that uh, to yeah. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you guys see, uh, uh, while we were on the subject of these promos, Will Ospreay, did you see that last week on AEW Dynamite? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the right? promo. The dig on Triple H yeah. and all that stuff, and yeah. Triple H's response was like, "That's why we didn't hire him. He's well, a loose cannon. He does. I, he goes off script." So it, it's not even the loose cannon. He's Triple H basically said, "We don't want anybody that can't do the grind." And Will Osprey's right. defense is, "I'm flying first class yeah. back and forth to yeah. London yeah. once a yeah. week. I can handle the grind, motherfucker. I would, I, I'd, I'd do that for free. Yeah. Have you ever been on a first class flight to London? Like that is sign me up. I'll, say, I'll, I'll do it." You know, I mean, Will yeah, they're, they're, they're paying me millions of dollars and flying me first class once a week back and forth or back back home home yeah. to England. I know what the grind is like. No, Triple H was sitting in a rental car wrestling 340 times a year. You know, I, That's I, will, the grind. I, I will say that Dynamite put on a good show because uh, Will Ospreay and uh, Claudio, obviously formerly Cesaro, yeah. Debbie, yeah. Won, won hell I mean, of a match well, last night. Although you, know, you got to be careful because they WrestleNomics put the numbers out, and this yeah. is two weeks in a row now that Ospreay, Mercedes Monet, yeah. and Okada segments all lost viewers. Yeah, it's crazy. They're not wrestling except for Will Ospreay and right. Okada. This hey this uh, whole thing with Mercedes Monet is just ridiculous. Uh, Eric Bischoff said it. They blew it. She yeah. she's nothing now. She made her debut and she's nothing. And well, she's not wrestling till double they, or nothing they, today. They, they she's going to be a heel, a natural heel. She will no, be. They, they, there's, there's no way they could damage anyone worse than they did with Okada. They brought him in and pay, and sent him with the Young Bucks, yeah. who have been ratings and channel changing poison for a couple of years now. If Tony Khan was smart. He would throw. Um, well, there's your with Mercedes Monet, Monet to interfere but, in the Willow match against if, Julia Hart on Sunday. They got they got to do something. Yeah, if if we're still uh, if we're still talking about promotions though, uh, next week I'm going to play the backstage footage of of Benny uh, when he went after Bruce for these extra points. I feared for my life, so I want to make sure everyone knows. It, just as long as you have timestamps and sound on the video, I'll right. be happy. Hey guys, I yeah. wanted to bring up one other thing from this week that was absolutely great, and I have to say, our truth. Oh, oh, he's the yeah. best. The best. He yes. sold the show. He always does. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, what are you doing, Tommaso Tampa? <laughs> <laughs> watching, so watching on the couch when, when, when Damian Priest held the title up and you uh, see the red yeah, title yeah. pop up out of nowhere, <laughs> I popped on the couch. That was great. Absolutely. And he broke Triple H. I, 
which is always fun to see. I think we're going to see a lot more R Truth than all this stuff because that Good. was that was his, a, that's an epic R, promo right R, there. R Truth and the Judgment, it, it be you know his his comedy with the Judgment Day is easily some of the oh, best yeah. stuff they've done in the last six months, yeah. six eight months. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like a, it's a resurgence of him. That dude is amazing. absolutely amazing. And, so and you know what? I'm yeah. I'm usually quick to criticize comedy and wrestling. You that was Damian Priest's first promo as your new heavyweight champion. Yeah, comedy segment, but it worked. That's yeah. how good it was. That's yeah. why you know what? Fifty six times he was a twenty four seven champion or something like that. 20, 24 uh, 7, 365, 7 11 European title. Yeah, you're gonna <laughs> see a lot more of them. So it's gonna be unbelievable. I love it. I love the skits. I think they're gonna incorporate it. It's kind of like Attitude Everish. Remember with Michaels and. Uh, Triple H always teasing Sergeant Slaughter because he spit and he put they put the hats on and all right. that stuff with the shield. I mean, this is our truth that it's finest. So they got to keep going with him. Yeah, uh, you know that that's another reason to tune into Raw. But I, I like it. I mean, you know, hey, he's gonna. I'm glad he's finally a legitimate tag team champion. The guy's been wrestling for I mean, the WWE. Well, I was gonna say forever. you're 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 burying the lead that he's 52 yeah. and doing yeah. some of the best work of his career. And what's the first thing you did when he got in the ring? You did a uh, split. Yeah, the, yeah. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> what's and up? you know he what's he's up? one of Vince's favorites too. And yeah. I'm glad they're not holding it against no, him. He's one of he, Vince's well, favorite H, people. He's a triple, H, triple H loves him too. So yeah, he's, he's, he's universally yeah, loved. Right in that sweet spot. Yeah. Yeah. Your cats agree, Dan. I could hear them in the Your back. Cats agree. They are singing that song, baby. They are Ready. truth fans. The verdict Mark is in. Sure. The cats agree. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome, awesome guys. And they're so, finicky by nature, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Benny, congratulations on the win tonight. We got it, but we got to start. Thank Congrats, here. Benny. Thank so, you, uh, the man. On behalf of this amazing panel of elite wrestling experts, this is elite. ESO, and we will see you guys next week. Later. What a day. What a day, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We love you all.